The pandemic leading to a big shift in how people worked this past year. The latest survey results from work marketplace Upwork shows that nine months into the pandemic, nearly 42% of the American workforce remains fully remote. And the trend could be here to stay, with more than 36 million Americans expected to work remotely by 2025, an 87% increase from pre-pandemic levels. For more, let's bring in John Chuang, CEO of uh, marketing and creative staffing firm Aquint. Uh, thanks uh, so much for joining us, John. Very good afternoon to you. Clearly, there's been a massive growth uh, in this trend this past, uh, this past year. Does the pace of that growth at least uh, slow down as we move into next year? No, I don't think the pace of the growth uh, uh, slows down. If anything, um, it accelerates. You know, trying to get workers back into the office is going to be like trying to unring a bell. Uh, it's going to be extremely uh, difficult. Um, and uh, let me tell you why. First of all, um, workers really love working from home um, because they save time, because they save costs in commuting, because they have better work-life balance. Uh, they really enjoy it. And um, companies are going to be a competitive disadvantage if they don't allow workers to continue working at home because companies really like this. And companies really, uh, and, and knowledge-based workers and talent really call the shots nowadays. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on companies to enable people to work from home. Second of all, future talent um, is going to be remote. And let me explain why. Right now, the United States has many, many different labor markets. Um, but with coronavirus and the, and the advent of remote work, you're all of a sudden able to tap into a much larger pool of people and get a lot better talent. Now, so when it comes to hiring a B player um, locally or an A player remotely, companies are going to go for the remote talent. And it's already really helped a lot of companies, like the automobile companies. They can never really great, get a lot of great technical talent in Detroit, and now they're much more competitive. So I think because talent, existing companies, existing talent want to work remotely, and future hires are going to be better if they remo mm -hmm. work remotely, there's going to be a lot of pressure uh, for remote work. And then one last final reason is costs. Companies are saving a ton of money um, or conversely wasting a ton of money if they have office space that sits unused. Office and occupancy space could be anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of people costs. And if companies can save this money, it goes straight to the bottom line. So there's going to be cost reasons and there's going to be talent and people reasons uh, to keep remote going even after the vaccine has been distributed. I know you're speaking broadly, John, here, but I have to think it varies by industry as for who's going to be eager to get back in the office and, and who might let, let workers stay remote. There's got to be costs for certain industries like the banks, I think, of for not having that culture of ideas and, and in-person gatherings. Doesn't it matter? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, no, that, that it's definitely varies by industry, um, um, but it's not even by industry. It's almost by company culture. Look, after the vaccine has been distributed, there's going to be three types of companies. Companies that try to go back to the old way, and let's say a third of companies do that. Companies that embrace the future, um, a lot of technical companies do it, but even a lot of old world companies are doing it, such as, you know, Peugeot and, and Ford and National Insurance. Um, but then there's going to be a lot of companies in, in the middle, sort of a hybrid. But at the end of the day, you're going to see a, uh, that's 50 percent of businesses, though, doing new ways. And there's going to be intense pressure to keep it that way. So right now, you're just seeing a lot, even in banks, you're seeing, you know, a company like Morgan Stanley might have 90 percent of their employees working from home right now. And there's going to be a lot of pressure uh, to keep it that way. I think going back to the old world is, is not going to happen. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.